the Gospel today tell us about St. John the Baptist's martyrdom. Why? Why did John accept death? Why did he accept to stop doing the task that was so important, like preparing the weight of the Lord? Why? Not because he wanted to suffer, and not because he had finished his mission. He had barely begun to do it. He had barely begun to prepare the way for the Messiah. However, there was something that John considered even more important. In fact, it was related to everything he did. Something was to defend the family. There was an incestuous marriage. If John who had all the moral authority over the people, kept quiet, it is possible that many will be, have said, if this one keeps quiet, it is not bad. The priests of the temple should have spoken. Why didn't the Pharisees speak? So punctually and exquisite with the fulfillment of the law, because they were all afraid, or because perhaps some of them were also doing something wrong. But John neither did wrong things, nor he was afraid, and he spoke. And it cost him his life, in a cruel way, at the hands of a bad woman, a woman who ended up with her own ruin, with the ruin of her second husband. Because first, she had urgent with him to separate from the previous wife he had, who was another than the daughter of the king of the Nevesians, of the city of Petra, who, of course, attacked him and Rome had to intervene to defend him, and then instead of him to take the process of his brother, and that provoked the wrath of the empire Claudius, who sent him into exile, and both died. Herod and Herodias died in exile. That woman was full of hatred for John because he was embarrassing her. John could not stop her from doing what she wanted, it, but he could, in front of the people, say, you are an adulteress, and say in front of the people to the great king, you are an adulteress. They could do it. They were doing it. And the priests were all silent. The Pharisees were silent, and the rich were silent. But the voice of conscience, which John represented, was not silent. The right of God had to be defended. The family had to be defended. This, which happened 2,000 years ago, it is still happening today. God's rights must be defended, and the family must be defended. Many years ago, I read the phrase of Eliot, Nobel Prize winner, author of an exquisite book, that I recommend, Martyr in the Cathedral. The death of St. Thomas Baker, Eliot said, he said, they are trying to experiment to build the world without God. They will fail. In the meantime, let us save our families. They are trying an experiment. Eliot said, this a hundred years ago, and he saw it then. They are trying an experiment to build the world without God build the world as a consequence without humanity, with a relative dictatorship. They are trying an experiment, and they are going to fail, but they are going to live. They are living. Many have left. Many corpses. Let's think of the corpses they left by abortion, for example, or let us think about the corpses that are going to remain of their spiritual and philosophical type so many things are happening with the application of the LGBT doctrine. They are trying an experiment, but they will fail. But in the meantime, let us save our family. And that is difficult enough for us not to pull all of our efforts into it, saving our family. I ask myself, is everyone really doing all that they can do to save their families? This homily 
between the home lead of the bus, the different platforms, which is distributed by WhatsApp, in short, this homily. We calculate that between one thing or another, a hundred thousand people may be watching it, and perhaps more. This message reaches one hundred thousand people. Save your family. Do what you can to save your family. Many of these people, many of them, have problems and had had problems in transmitting the faith to their family. Many have seen with bitterness, with pain, that their children do not practice, do not go to Mass, are atheists. Their children are no longer baptized or have not made their first communion. This is a tragedy. What are we doing? It is not enough to lament. It is not to express wishes, which are like a toast to the sun. I would like to have, I would like to have wanted to. What have you done to save your family? What are you doing to save your family? God is going to hold you unaccountable for it. That is one of the first things that the Lord is going to examine you for. He's not going to ask you to account for the answer your children gave you, but He's going to ask you to account seriously for what you have done. Their answer is theirs, but you, have you done well your part? He strikes me, and it hurts me greatly. The we offer a 10-year adult formation program, five years of which are Bible studies. That we offer five years of catechesis for children, five years of catechesis for teenagers. And many people have responded, asking for that formation, which is free, which is online. Many people are interested in receiving that formation to try at least with their children or with their grandchildren, with friends to evangelize, a lot of people, but those many people are a very small minority. They gave their lives to defend the family, not only St. John the Baptist. I think of St. Tom, Thomas More, for example, who refused to accept the king's divorce and so many more. They give their lives to defend the family. And you? Do you limit yourself to complain, to lamenting, to say, how sorry I feel myself? Well, examine your conscience, because maybe you are guilty. Not for what you didn't do, because no one taught you, because there were no resources, because you didn't know, but for what you do not do, because of sheer laziness, you do not even want to try. Defending family today is an essential part of evangelization. I will not want to find myself before God's judgment empty-handed, not because I didn't succeed, but because I did not even try with all my strength that those people who depend on me have the most important thing, faith. Faith that my parents gave me, and that I have the duty to pass on, so be it.